during the Christmas time and season, we had a lot of good things we experienced, didn't we? We had our communion service on Christmas Eve, and that was, that was really special. That was really nice. Very, very special. Really was good. Of course, the chili cook-off, that was great. We had a good, good crowd for that, and uh, everybody made some good chili, and it was so different. I mean, you're talking about some of the same similar ingredients, but turning out a uh, different taste that were there. Uh, and uh, one, one chili was made with some peanut butter in it. Now that was the most unusual of all. I mean, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't know it when you tasted of it, but... Uh, peanut butter and honey. Peanut butter and honey, yeah. I mean, it was so, so unique, all the different ones who did. It was really unique. Very nice. Very good. Praise God. A lot of people went to a lot of trouble. Uh, Barb and Joe put a lot of effort in getting all that together. And so many people contributed for the Christmas Eve communion. So many were a part of that. And it was just great. It really was. I think it made the end, the end of our year very special. We ended on a good note, for sure. And the start of this year, we want to start on some good notes as well. And that trading my sorrow, that you guys did a great job on that. I, I was wanting to start dancing on that thing. Yeah. yeah. That was great. It really was. Wednesday night, when you bring your fellowship meal, we share together. We're going to talk. Uh, we, you know, Jacob has already passed on, and Joseph, Joseph, and now, you know, the children of children, God's people, the Israelites, were brought to Egypt to save them from the famine with the dreams that were given unto Joseph. But now there's a lot's happened, and now the Israelites find themselves in a certain amount of slavery in Egypt. And we're going to talk about that in Exodus chapter 1, uh, Wednesday night. And all that transitioning of all that took place with Jacob and his sons and Joseph and, and, there, and all that transpired. And now we're, there's a new time, new day, new place, new situation leading up to the Exodus, of course. But it's just very interesting what we're doing. Today, I uh, wanted to do a second message. Last week, I started on the right kind of faith for the right kind of a new year. And I wanted to follow that up with believing for 2020 vision in 2020. I, my, Joan and I and the kids were around Tammy. And she's the one that sort of came up with the idea of uh, 2020 vision. And I hadn't, hadn't thought of it, and it came out of her mouth. And so I built a message around that, uh, us discussing that uh, during the time we were together with our family. Last week we talked about the five kinds of faith, natural, intellectual, which is more of a mental ascent, a saving faith in Ephesians 2.8, and the fruit of faith in Galatians 5.22 and 23, and the gifts of special faith in 1 Corinthians 12.9, and to another was given the gift of faith. And we're going to ask the Lord just to speak to us today on uh, helping, the, helping us to get rid of those cataracts, spiritual cataracts, Nancy Lee, off of our eyes so we can see clearly in this new year. 2020 vision in unusual 2020. And someone said we're back to the 20s now. Which is an interesting thought, too. Father, thank you for touching us today with your word and speaking to our hearts and our minds and our spirit. God, just implant a seed, a word from your word that will change the course of this year for us all. That will make things good for this new year. 
And we thank you for doing that today by your Holy Spirit and by the beauty of your word. And we say this in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You're very familiar, I know you are, with Proverbs 29, 18. We're using the word vision in different perspectives. Of course, you see that. But Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And that, that is a fact. And as we are keepers of the law, we are happy. And what you need to understand that where there is no vision, the vision spoken of here, or the law, or the vision, always points to the scriptures, to the Word of God. We have to have vision filtered through the Word of God. Everything that we see with our natural eye or with the eyes of faith has to be filtered through the Scriptures. Everything, we take everything to the Scriptures and we check it out, don't we? Everything is checked out with the Scriptures, the truth of God's Word. I was watching David Jeremiah this morning, and I think he said 26 or 29 million copies of the Word of God was sold last year. Still, number one book has been for ever since they've been keeping records. It's still number one. Can you imagine 26, 28 million copies in 2019 of the Word of God that was bought? or sold. Think about it. Uh, it's just amazing when you think about it. Where there is no vision, one translation says, with, with where there's no ongoing fresh revelation of His Word, people lose restraint. People perish or people give up. Listen, if you don't have the nourishment of the ongoing revelation of God's Word, you will be tempted to give up. Come on. Got to have, and remember, keeping the law or the vision all points to the Scriptures. Everything, the Scriptures. Believing for the ability to see clearly in 2020, dash, dash, perception. I mean, remember people saying that perception is reality, right? It's what people perceive things to be. I, I want to believe God to give all of us a real clear vision of understanding or perception of things we see or hear. It's important. Take, for instance, uh, the other night I was watching things about world news. See, you've got to, the, the scriptures, you take everything that you hear to the scriptures and look, compare everything to the scriptures. They're, these were conservative people, very conservative people, talking about so many resources of America's treasure and blood and, and treasure spent in the Middle East while China is building up their military to unprecedented places. And they're just building, building, and building. And they're totally ignored to some degree while all of our resources are in the Middle East for years now, billions of dollars. And of course, this came in conversation with the, with the, with the taking out of the terrorist that was a, a very bad man and responsible for the blood on his hands of many Americans. Can't believe we had people that were concerned about him. <laughs> and that, that, that is concerning. But, but I heard conservative people, I'm giving you an illustration of something that, that from people that, I, that are conservative, that I feel like they, they believe in support of Israel and all of that, but they were, they were concerned that all of the efforts and all the treasure of America for 20, 30 years now is all centered in the Middle East. And while China is building and building and taking over and building and 
their military strength. But when I ran that through the filter of God's Word, I said, okay. Well, we sort of understand why there's a lot of things going on in the Middle East because we know the Scriptures speak very clearly of the Middle East, of what is to take place in the end time. But then we also know there's only one nation on the earth that can put a 200 million man army together, and that is China. So there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle that is coming together in the end time. And I start thinking about the 38th, 39th chapter of Ezekiel. I think about all the end time things of Armageddon and who's going to be players and all these things that are being said on world affairs. I filter them through the scriptures. Oh. Okay, things are sort of lining up over here and they're lining up over there. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. God give us the ability to see in 2020 and see things through perception, visibly see and understand what we see happening in the world. But then we also need the supernatural ability to see through the eyes of faith. Amen? And that is primarily important. And someone has said it in this way, ultimately, we need perception, yes. But ultimately, I heard this quote, it's neither insight nor sight, but the ability to see the invisible things through the eyes of faith. And that is true as well. Faith is the spiritual eye, the eye of the soul that looks into the unseen and behold things which are beyond the vision of the human eye. Are you with me? Knowledge or understanding. You see that in Hebrews 11, 1 through 10, which was refer to some of that. You also see that in 2 Kings. The faith of man versus the faith of God. We're always dealing with the faith of man or the wisdom of man versus the faith and wisdom of God. That's always in play all the time. In 1 Corinthians 2, 5, we see the faith of man and the faith of God in one verse illustrated. He says in verse 5 that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man. That's the faith of man. But in the power of God. The foundation of our faith should be in the power of God and His Word. Amen? Amen. We're always confronted with the faith of man, the faith of God, the faith of man. The faith of God is seen in Acts 3.16. This is, a, I think, either the Amplified or another translation. I forgot which one we used, but it's easier to understand in this translation. It is by faith in the name of Jesus that this man, whom you all see and know, has by his name been made strong. Yes, it is faith inspired by Jesus, the faith of God, that has made this this complete cure of this man before the eyes of you all. The faith of man, the faith of God. How many want to walk in faith that is inspired by Jesus? How many walk, want to walk in faith that comes from the Word of God? Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now we have some things to look at in the seeing 2020 vision in 2020. We need to see the wisdom of faith found in Hebrews 11, 1 and 2. 
Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, I told you last week that faith is always present tense. Hope is always future. Hope is always future. Faith is always present tense. And I told you that patience keeps your hope alive. Hope keeps your faith alive. And faith keeps you alive. Keeps you going. Seeing the wisdom of faith, faith makes unseen things real and future things become present things. Okay? Moffat's translation puts it this way. Now, faith means that we are confident of what we hope for, the evidence of things not seen. Amplified says it this way. Being proof, being proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real what is not revealed to our senses. Another way, commentary Newberry renders the words evidence of things not seen, and he says it this way, a conviction of facts not seen. A conviction of facts not seen. Pretty powerful stuff. God wants to give you 2020 vision seeing the wisdom of how faith works. Faith is substance. It is substance. Faith is now. Faith is substance of things. Hope for future. The evidence are facts of things not seen. Some the world says seeing is believing. But the Word of God says as believers, believing is seeing. Seeing is believing. No, believing is seeing. Just reversed. You got man's wisdom, you got God's wisdom. Man's wisdom says, you show it to me and I'll believe. The wisdom of God says, I believe and I'll see it different. Okay. Let's go to the back of our page. Lord, give us the 2020 vision, seeing the wonders of creation through faith. In verse 3 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, through faith we understand underline understand through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God God spoke it and it was there the matter or antimatter matter is the materialization of God's spoken word he speaks it and it materializes now, it's kind of <laughs> humorous to some degree, but it's, but it's true. Through faith, we understand. In the natural, we don't understand. But through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. In other words, it is through faith the enabled us that enables us to see to perceive that the worlds were put in order at God's command it enables us to see to perceive that the worlds were put in order at God's command James I think it's 117 says everything consists or has held together by the spoken word of God. God spoke it and it materialized. And God says no matter, then it's no matter there. I mean, it's, he's, it's, it's his spoken word that he has spoken. And if he takes it away, it won't be there because it's the materialization of his spoken word. 
seeing the wonders of creation through faith. Seeing the wonders of worship through faith. Hebrews verse 4, chapter 11. Through faith, Abel offered a more acceptable sacrifice with the blood of the animal and not the fruit of the field that Cain brought. Why? Because Abel understood that worship is based on sacrifice. Abel did not understand, I mean, Cain did not understand that. He brought the gifts of the fruit of the field, but not of the blood sacrifice. And we know that the foundation of all worship is the foundation of the word sacrifice. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus Christ, by a new and living way, the new covenant, through the veil, his flesh, the cross, let us draw near with true hearts. All worship is based upon sacrifice. And Abel offered a more acceptable sacrifice through faith and his offering to God. He gained God's approval as an upright man, the Bible says. So the foundation of worship is sacrifice. The object of worship is God. In Revelation 22, verse 8 and 9, John is, is there in heaven, and he's before this angel, and he's tempted to want to worship the angel. And the angel said in verse 9, no, I'm a fellow servant like you. He says, worship God, not me. In verse 9, I am your fellow servant. Keep the saying of this book. And the book says we worship God and nothing else. God alone. So the foundation of worship is sacrifice. The object of worship is God. And the power of worship is the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 2.18 gives us and speaks of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit that opens the door of the power of worship. Amen. Seeing the worship of faith. Seeing the walk of faith. Hebrews 11.5 and 6. By faith, Enoch was transferred. I just used all the words in different translations. He was transferred, transplanted, removed from earth. God took him away to heaven so that he never died. He was not found because God promoted him, because he pleased God. He walked with God. The walk of faith is illustrated by two men who are said to have walked with God. Enoch walked and had fellowship with God, Genesis 5.24 says. Noah walked and had faith with God, Genesis 6.9. The walk of faith, we need to see it clearly in our spiritual eyes. And we need to make a decision in this 2020 that we're going to walk in faith and we're going to walk with God. Amen. Amen. And we want to have vision to see through the telescope of faith. Hebrews eleven thirteen. There's so many more, but I kind of chose these. These all died in faith, not having received the promises or the tangible fulfillment of them, but having seen them afar off and embraced and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims of earth. Notice three words that are expressed in those verses. Persuaded, embraced, and confessed. Persuaded, embraced, and confessed. Can you see through the telescope of faith today? Looking down through the telescope of faith. These all died in faith, not having received the promises or the tangible fulfillment, but having seen them afar off 
and they embraced them, they confessed them, and they were persuaded of them, and they were strangers and pilgrims of this earth. I think that that's what keeps me going and what keeps you going as we look through the telescope of faith. And we, we, we're not there yet, but we know it's waiting on us. We know it's waiting on us. And we're persuaded. And we've embraced it and we confess it each time we come together to worship. By faith, Abel was moved to worship. By faith, Enoch was moved to walk with God. By faith, Noah was moved to build the ark. By faith, David was moved to face giant Goliath. And the big question for us today are two questions. What are you seeing through the eyes of faith in 2020? And you need to ask yourself that question maybe every day. What am I seeing through the eyes of faith? And the next question, which is equally important, what is faith moving you and I to do in 2020? It's got to be something more than 2019. Yes, you should be moved to walk in faith. You should be moved to walk with God. And you should be moved to trust God, to worship God. But we need people that will step out and allow faith to move you to do something maybe outrageous maybe a little bit crazy maybe something that's going to make a difference in somebody else's life what is faith moving you to do something great something that can make a difference in someone's eternal life there's, we, how, many, how many see a lot of empty chairs here? And I know it burdens all of our hearts. All of us are burdened by that. But I want to believe. I want to believe that somehow each one of us can pick one chair here. One chair. Just pick one chair. Just one. Just one chair. And say, by the help of God... And him working through me, I am going to feel a person in one of these chairs in 2020. Just one chair. I believe God's big enough to do that. And I believe that some of us are crazy enough to believe it, that he can do it. Just one chair. This church needs to go forward. God's have it here. God has it here for a reason and a purpose. And I know all of us, I'm, not, I'm preaching to the choir. I know we're all burdened over this. But I want to believe that in 2020, I can get a person in this chair. I believe it's possible. And some of us may be bold enough to take on two chairs. But God help us to take the cataracts off of our eyes and see what God is able to do in faith through us in 2020. Where there's no vision, people get discouraged. People, people perish. People give up. People lose restraint. All these things are true. Let's believe that God can make us loving people enough to reach out in love to somebody. If we have to offer to take them out to lunch or whatever we've got to do, let's put them in a chair here this next year in 2020 and see God bless these people that we bring or we are the cause of them coming. See what God does for them. 
and then we'll stand up and rejoice on what God has done for people that we have reached out to. Let's stand together, could we?